Diana Duan Li Liao. And at present, I'm the chief interpreter of the interpretation service at the headquarters of the United Nations here in New York. My name is uh, Brigitte Andreasier Pearl. I've been an interpreter at the UN for 33 years, actually. I started in 71. And for the last three years, I've been the uh, chief of the French interpretation section. An interpreter is supposed to understand certain languages and then turn it into their mother tongue most of the time. So for example, a Russian interpreter will hear the original speech in English and in French and turn it into his mother tongue, which is Russian. Well, interpreting is very different than translating. And there's a, an enormous amount of pride about that here among the interpreters. They don't like to be called translators. An interpreter is someone who is listening and literally interpreting on the floor while, say, the General Assembly or is in action or any other particular meeting, and they will interpret at the same time. School of thought would say, as long as you translate the word, you know, it's okay. No, you have to make sense. It has to be coherent. It's not enough to do the translation. You know, you have to interpret and make full sentences, and you have to make sense in what you say. You have to speak while the speakers are speaking. So this is called simultaneous interpretation. Translation is written. So you deal with the documents. A good interpreter is not necessarily a good translator and vice versa. It is a cross between a real professional profession and an artistic profession. State can acquire at another's expense. You have to know your technical side, but you also have to have a certain disposition before you can do it well. And when you are in the booth, when you're in front of a meeting, part of it is really performing also, because you are, after all, on air, and you cannot redo what you just did. The partisans of both Kuman Kuman and Ajin Zola have become terrorists. So they're pretty fascinating people. They live, they've lived international lives. They. Their research is reading the newspapers or the funny papers or comic books in another language. They're constantly trying to learn slang and current expressions because when they get in trouble is when the conversation gets very technical or moves outside the classical or traditional phrases of language. Sometimes delegates go too fast, but actually in my case, when it's fast and easy, I like it because it's very challenging. Now, fast and difficult, that's when you just have to you know, keep your cool. But the main thing is you never have to give the impression to your audience that you are lost. It is seldom not stressful because you're not saying what you want to say but someone else's thoughts. So you can never know where they, they're going to lead you. When it is politically charged, you're particularly stressful because you really don't want to make a mistake. There are certain characteristics that a lot of interpreters have in common. Most of the time, they're musical. Quite a few of us, um, you know, play a musical instrument or are in a choir. And uh, when I first talked to Sidney Pollack, he said, OK, you, Brigitte, what is your hobby? I said, well, I play the bassoon. He said, OK, tell me, tell me again about the bassoon. How big is the case and this, that and the other? Would you take your bassoon case to work? I say, sometimes I do when I have a rehearsal in the evening and things like that. What is that? Oh, come on, Roland, it's my flutes and stuff. Here you have Mr. Fark, chief of the Arabic section. The interpretation. La esperanza de un mundo con justicia para todos. La paz del mundo jamás debía verse en peligro. We must not allow the peace of the world to be jeopardized. No, solo es esto una negación de la democracia. Now this is the uh, English booth of the Security Council, and you have two interpreters at work. The uh, speaker is speaking English, so they're listening, waiting for their turn. When some foreign language will be spoken in the room, then they would start working. And that is actually where Nicole Kidman came that day to observe the interpreters at work. 
When I was doing my research, I went and spent time um, in the little boxes, in the interpreting boxes, and saw the General Assembly in action. And what they really taught me was that you really have to interpret each word, because if you get one word wrong, then you can absolutely throw off the understanding. Some people prefer to interpret from a booth because you, are, you feel protected, you're behind the glass and all that. But uh, personally, I prefer what you call life. They are bilaterals. For example, two heads of states and then you're with one and then to talk to the other. Because see, it is more poignant and you can feel the electricity in the air. You can, you know, see the expressions on the face much closer. And you, you really feel that you are the voice tacked to another voice. And the time is so tight that you really don't have to, to think of yourself. But you hear what you what you're hearing and quickly you render it. And I love that when it is a bilateral. Don't the methods President Zawani uses against his own people. Ola Zawani in Sitsizini. Dr. Zawani is an educator. It's a fictitious country that we've made up and that we've made up of believe it or not, a fictitious language, which only Nicole Kidman can speak. I can't utter a word of it, but she's learned a lot of it. The French proposal is a diplomatic headache for both of us. It was pretty hard, but I like a challenge. <laughs> we went to a language institute in England, and we've developed a cross between Swahili, which is the lingua franca, and lingua franca in a lot of East Africa, African countries, and Shona, which is a language from Mozambique. And uh, this language institute took these two languages and then added a few things of their own and gave us a new language, which we use and we call it Matoban, and we call the country Matobo. You really want to be precise about it and you want to be able to speak it quickly and you want to understand what you're saying. That's so important, even if it is sort of a make-believe language. Which language? The Matoban ambassador. He'll be speaking Ku. Ku? You speak the language, don't you? It's almost like any other job. You know, if you've never done it, it looks impossible. But listen, brain surgeon is real hard, but you've trained and you can do it, right? You know, pilot of an airplane, you get the training and then you can do it. So it's, it's the same for us. I had to interpret recipes. I have to re interpret baby feet, the instructions. And uh, oh, but you know, it, you, you, you never know which way it is going to take. Because they have a kind of diplomatic banter, no? in the beginning, before they really get into the nitty-gritty. They can be talking about anything. Hey, Manju, what's it semi? For us all, to do a good job, we have to know what, what we're talking about. And to know what you're talking about, you have to know what is happening in the world. And for that, we might be more, more involved than uh, the when people think. They think that we're just interpreting speeches, but actually, no. We are really trying to figure out what that country is trying to speak, how we try to help people talk and not fight.